Normal cholesterol levels do not protect you from having a heart attack or a stroke. In fact, half of people that have a heart attack have normal or at goal cholesterol levels. Right? You've been propagandized that cholesterol causes heart disease and strokes and that if you have normal cholesterol, you'll have decreased risk of it. But in fact, that's not true. Again, half of people with heart attacks had normal or at goal cholesterol levels. What about high blood pressure? You think because you don't have high blood pressure, you're protected from a cardiovascular event? That also isn't true. In fact, the American College of Cardiology has said that using the current guidelines for cardiovascular risk, such as cholesterol levels and blood pressure and having a stress test, etc., they say that using those guidelines, 88% of people that die of a heart attack would have been considered low or moderate risk by those guidelines if they had been evaluated the day before they died of the heart attack. Again, you are not safe because your cholesterol is normal and your blood pressure is normal. So then, how do we know if you are safe? And what other things could be contributing to the heart disease if those things aren't risk factors that we can rely on? That's what today's video is about and I'm going to show you a case study of a person that we would all think is healthy and at low risk based on how they appear visually and in the office based on standard guidelines but I'm going to show you more in-depth testing that shows that she isn't. I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at optimal. Let's get to the case. All right, so if we draw out a case for you, we've got a uh, young woman, female, okay, five foot five inches, 126 pounds. All right, so already, if we surveyed the audience, we'd say, do you think this person is at high cardiovascular risk just based on height and weight? The answer would be no. If you saw her out on the street and you said, and we asked you the same question, you'd say, no, she's skinny, she's healthy, right? Because in our society, we equate skinny with healthy and low risk. But remember, you can't judge a book by its cover. All right, so if we take this woman, like I did in my office, through standard cardiovascular assessment, okay, we find that she had normal cholesterol. In fact, her total cholesterol was a 137 milligrams per deciliter, all right? And her blood pressure was not only normal, it was low, okay? So she had low blood pressure. And it was 98 over 58. So by all appearances to a, to a pretty routine office visit, she looks low risk cardiovascular disease wise. She's 5'5", 126, so she's thin. She has normal cholesterol. She has not even normal blood pressure, but low, which, you know, that could be an issue for other reasons, but from a cardiovascular risk perspective, not often the main focus there. Okay, so remember, half of people with normal cholesterol, or half of people with heart attacks had normal or at goal cholesterol. All right, so we don't want to be fooled because I could say based on this, hey, you're at low risk, and remember the American College of Cardiology said 88% of people that die of a heart attack by these standards the day before would have been considered low or moderate risk. So we want to do our best to not misinform patients and give them a false sense of security. So I practice functional medicine. Functional medicine is doing the detective work to figure out where are all the sticks in the spokes in your physiology so that we can find and address the cause. So in this person we did more in-depth cardiovascular testing and we did not just cardiovascular but broad testing to look at her whole physiology so let's see what showed up all right so from I'm gonna stick to cardiovascular risk things today because you know otherwise the video will get extremely long but when we look at this patient okay we ran a high sensitivity C-reactive protein 
This is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease in and of itself. Medicine wants you to be below a three, all right? Hers was lab high at 3.4 milligrams per liter. So that marker indicates systemic inflammation. The more inflamed you are, the higher your risk of heart disease, stroke, cancer, autoimmunity, anything. All right, so there's one inflammatory marker. Another one that she had was lab high ferritin. Okay, hers was over two times too high for a woman at 329, or excuse me, 27 nanograms per milliliter. High ferritin with the rest of her iron panel normal. High ferritin represents again an acute phase reaction or another inflammatory marker. High ferritin drives oxidative stress or rusting of the inside out, right? Speeds up aging, damages cells. So that's not good. All right, now her, her homocysteine was massively sky high at 34 U moles per liter, all right? We want your homocysteine at optimal to be seven. Hers is 34. Homocysteine is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, for stroke, for dementia. It's a very common driver of brain fog or headaches. It damages vasculature, damages the heart, damages neurons, all right? It's not conventionally run, so you could be walking around like she is, looking skinny with normal cholesterol, but be just blowing up neurons and destroying vasculature and not even know it. All right, homocysteine is part of the methylation cycle. That's a process in our body that should recycle homocysteine so that doesn't build up and destroy things. But in order to properly recycle that homocysteine, you need optimal B vitamin levels, especially methylfolate, okay? We tested her folate. And her folate, her, meth, her folate level was lab low at 2.7. And forgive me, I forget the units on folate right now. But she was 2.7, which is lab low. I like it above 20. Okay, so if you don't have enough folate, you can't recycle homocysteine. Homocysteine builds up and increases cardiovascular risk, kidney risk, heart risk, neuron risk, brain risk, all that. So massive, massive problem right there. She also had lab low vitamin B2. All right, why is that important? Vitamin B2 is a key cofactor for an enzyme called nitric oxide synthase. Nitric oxide synthase produces nitric oxide. Nitric oxide by some is considered the miracle molecule. It does all kinds of things for us, and I recently made a video about that, so check out the channel for that one. But re in regards to cardiovascular health, Nitric oxide is one of our best vasodilators, so widens your arteries, so blood can flow easily, takes stress off the heart, okay? When you don't have enough B2, that nitric oxide synthase enzyme can't work optimally to produce the nitric oxide, so that promotes endothelial damage in the vasculature. Endothelial cells are the cells that line your blood vessels. When you damage those cells, that's the first step that occurs 10 to 20 years before the first sign of cardiovascular disease in terms of hypertension and things like that. So she's deficient in B2, likely impacting her nitric oxide production. So in that context with high homocysteine, high inflammation, that's risky for the heart in addition to the risk we're already seeing. Okay, next, her vitamin K2 level was functionally low. Vitamin K2 plays a key role in calcium metabolism and specifically in preventing calcium deposition in the arteries. Calcium deposition in the arteries drives atherosclerosis and heart disease and clot risk. So we definitely want to get her K2 levels up. So this is what we're seeing in the lab work, okay? So normal cholesterol, low blood pressure, nice uh, height to weight ratio, she's skinny, so the average American would point at her and the average doctor would look at her and say, hey, she's healthy, she's low cardiovascular risk. But if we look deeper under the hood, we see she's got lab high independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease and C high sensitivity C-reactive protein, high inflammatory marker lab high ferritin, 
sky-high homocysteine, which damages heart and brain and kidneys and vasculature. She's lacking, she's deficient in two B vitamins that are necessary for cardiovascular health and many other things, but relevant to this video, the cardiovascular health. Her K2 is functionally low. You need that to prevent the calcium deposition in the arteries and preventing atherosclerosis. So under the hood, not looking good lab-wise. We didn't stop there. We also want to look at her body composition because you can be skinny but not be metabolically healthy. And that's what we'll see in this patient. And I'm gonna show you her medical grade body composition scan here as I write this out. But findings that we can see is she had high body fat percentage. Okay, so her body fat percentage was 34.5%. That's way too high for a female. We want to be around 22%, okay? And you can see in the visceral fat section that she's lab high on visceral fat. High visceral fat. So that body fat percentage of 34.5% is made up of subcutaneous fat and visceral fat. What's the difference? Subcutaneous fat is non-inflammatory fat that's just the good fat that's booties and breasts is how we communicate it okay the visceral fat is the pro-inflammatory fat that's the fat around our organs so visceral fat is associated with increased uh, diabetes risk and cardiovascular disease risk so she's got lab high levels of visceral fat not good okay and then also if you look at her muscle mass she has low muscle mass for her size, okay? She's got about 85% of the muscle mass we would expect in someone her size. So when you add all of this up, that actually makes her not skinny, but skinny fat, okay? And skinny fat is kind of the lay term, but medically it's called sarcopenic obesity. Essentially, she looks skinny, she's 5'5", 126, but when you break down her body composition, and this is why it's important to do this, that 126 is way too much fat compared to muscle. So yes, she doesn't look overweight, but she's overweight, she's skinny fat because of sarcopenia or not enough skeletal muscle relative to her fat mass. And again, that drives metabolic dysfunction, increased diabetes risk, heart disease risk, et cetera. So that's her medical grade body composition scan. And the last thing about that is there's a, a marker called whole body phase angle. And her whole body phase angle was functionally low at 4.8 degrees. Anything below 5.4 is suboptimal. The research says anything below 4.4 is lab low. Okay, what is this? This marker is associated as an inverse relationship with your inflammation. So the more inflamed you are, the lower your phase angle. What is phase angle? I've made videos on this, but phase angle is a marker of cellular integrity. You've heard of leaky gut, right? This marker is leaky cells. Okay, so the worse this marker is, the worse your cellular health, the greater your risk of all things. So that body composition scan, the medical grade one, shows us a lot of information that, again, reinforces, in addition to the lab markers, just because her cholesterol is normal doesn't mean she's safe from heart disease. And then lastly, we also run a, a test called accelerated photoplasmithography. Say that three times fast, right? Um, but what that test does is that measures arterial elasticity. Your heart pumps, pumps into the aorta. The aorta is an artery. Arteries pump too. They have musculature to pump. And then you have peripheral arteries that also pump. Okay, so this test tests arterial elasticity and gives us an idea of how far along the spectrum is a person towards arterial hardening or arterial sclerosis. Okay, and when you harden the arteries, that weakens the heart because the heart has to pump harder through arteries that are resisting its pump. So that can lead to congestive heart failure. So you can see on this report that the test scores a person from one to seven, one being the best, seven being very, very dangerous, okay? And you can see her score, which was a three, which is the first fail, 
Okay, she's young, so she's 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 not going to be a seven yet. But we also don't want to see her be a three. You can see seventy to eighty year olds as a two, which is healthy arteries, heart, healthy arterial elasticity. So with arterial hardening, with skinny fat body composition, with systemic inflammatory markers and nutrient deficiencies that are all key to cardiovascular health, we absolutely would be failing this person if we said, yeah, you're low risk based on what the American Cardio Co College of Cardiology says are poor guidelines, guidelines that fail most heart attack victims. So. I want you to see that just because you're skinny, just because you have normal cholesterol, just because you don't have high blood pressure, doesn't mean you're safe from a heart attack or stroke. There's much more to it and there's much better markers that help us understand the case. And so I would encourage you to don't be a victim because cardiovascular disease is the number one killer. And so just because you're skinny and young doesn't mean you're safe. If you want to be proactive and know what your risks are and know what you can do to address any risks that show up in you rather than hope you're okay, then partner with a functional medicine practitioner that does this kind of detective work that can figure out your specific case and variables involved and give you an individualized and specific plan to combat whatever shows up so that you can delay morbidity and mortality as long as possible and live a life at optimal.